It's a little bit of a complicated one today. It's called splitting the averages. And what the research team wanted to do was try to give you um, a little context around P&L. Mm -hmm. It's a little heavy, but um, I think we can take you through it. We wanted to show you some some interesting takeaways over multiple years of of like, um, you know, when you're thinking about kind of how to how to break down your positions, P and L wise, what strikes to use that kind of stuff. So let's take a look. It's not it it's it's not definitive, but it just gives you context. Mm -hmm. At yeah. the end of the day, net or average P and L is the trade statistic that matters the most. The path that gets taken to the end of the day, however can make a big difference, especially for the retail investor. Trades with larger winners and losers have more swingy trajectories. So let's examine the data to see how strike and strategy selection can help us find the right balance of risk and reward for um, our investment objectives. So the, how, how is your swing usually, your swingy trajectory i mean is it you swing to the left you swing to the right or you just don't swing at all omaha <laughs> um are you more stationary i was i'm i find you to be like more stationary swing yeah i'm very stable very stable stable yes. that's the word i was looking for thank you <laughs> um so we did a study we used 15 years worth of data in the spy options taking us back to 2008, we considered selling short the 45-day strangles and iron condors with a variety of deltas. All the trades were in the SPY. All the trades were closed at 21 DTE. Noting that the average P&L equals POP. Um, I can't even read that. POP times the average winner. Oh, that's too hard for me. So anyway, noting that we examined the size of the average up and down moves to help us see not just the net P&L, but how we got there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. I'm not sure Let's what formula we're trying to, to do there. So when you start to break it down and you talk about strangles, the first thing you notice here, and the, this is the only slide we're going to show you on strangles, is that we looked at some of the 40 delta put and call, the 30 delta, the 20 delta, and the 10 delta. The thing that jumps out on this slide to me is, and again, you know, we, we said we want to focus on average P&L. And when you look at the average P&L here, why would you take more risk to make less money? Like the, the highest P&L over 15 years is the 20 delta short strangle. Right. Okay? The average winner in that case is, is $160. The average loser is 251. So when you take the winner and loser, okay, and, and, and superimpose those over any of the other strikes, and you take the p l you're like okay i'd much rather have the higher pop the higher average p l and i can deal with the average winner being a little bit less than the highest and the average loser being a little bit less than the highest as well mm -hmm. i mean i think when you look at the slide the 20 delta short strangle is an absolute no-brainer over x number of years yeah, 15 years what do you think average loses less the, the profits around the same as some of the, the better performer with a lot less risk, half, you know, almost half the risk. Yeah, I, I yeah. also like the, you know, 74% pop. The higher pop. That's right. Let's go next slide. So then we go to the 20, we go to a wide iron condor. And this is 20 deltas wide. So these are really big wide iron condors. They're like synthetic strangles. And in this case, we look at it, and we go, okay. If we start with the short 30 delta, which is the closest thing to a short 20 delta strangle, mm -hmm. it has the highest pop, 64%. It has by far the highest P&L. It has the highest average winner. And of course, yeah, it's going to have the highest average loser because it's going to be the most times in play, but it doesn't, it doesn't, it doesn't really matter because we look at all the other numbers you're best off in this case being short the 30 delta with the 30 delta short strike $20 wide or 20 deltas wide. Yes. No argument, right? No argument. Okay. Not that I can see. 
yeah, I think this is I think this is kind of pretty clear cut. So all right, so far so good. So we're gonna go to the next slide. Now we're gonna look at the same strikes, but we're gonna look at 10 dollar wide iron contours, which is less of a synthetic. And here it's an absolute no brainer. Highest pop, the only ones you really make a lot of money on. Uh, the average winner blows everything else away, and the average loser is the same as everything else. I don't know how you can't do. You got to you got to do the short twenty or thirty delta. You can't do the big like you know at the money iron condors. Yes, totally agree. Yeah, I thought this is. I mean, the, I mean the, the numbers are there. I mean, I, I don't know. Can't yeah. make an argument for anything else. Yeah, I mean, here this is selling the twenty delta call and put. And buying something that's 10 delts away. This is a wide iron condor. Yes, wide but iron condor. It's a wide iron condor. It's made good money. It's not as good as the slide before. Go to the one before Beth, the, the slide four. Yeah. So this one, you make a little less money, which I'm not exactly sure, except to say that it must be because some of the losers over that 15 year period were too, were bigger and they we're took full, down. We're full losers because it's $20 yeah. worth of slides versus and they took And they took down the winners. Right. That's the only difference. Yeah. But yeah. when you look at these slides, if you're doing Iron Condors on the SPY, you want to go to the 20 Delta and do it 10 Deltas wide. I mean, that's your best results over 15 years. Mm -hmm. All right. I like it. Let's go. And, and, and in the naked options, go back to the first slide again. In the naked options, in the strangles, I mean, I think the short 20 Delta is the way to go. So I think in all these examples, you're basically on the short 20 Delta. That's your sweet spot. Understood. Okay, let's go to the last takeaways. Takeaways. So, in the long run, trades with undefined risk made more money than iron condors, but involved significantly larger ups or downs to get there. Strangles further out of the money were still generally profitable. That was that 20 delta we were talking about, and maybe more appealing to the retail investor with limited downside tolerance. When trading to fine risk, the trend was reversed and playing closer to at the money resulted in less swingy P&Ls. Yeah, but it, it wasn't, that didn't work for me. The far out of the money iron condors were victims of birds and elephants, but I thought that that it was way cleaner for me. Uh -huh. There are no short things in option trading, but looking at the historical data can give you confidence to place trades with risks you understand. I mean, for Tony and myself, the 20 delta, the short 20 delta was pretty strong across the board. Yeah, and it's consistent with a lot of the research that we've had too. 